We are here at Sam's Salvage Yard, and today we've got some issues at the yard. We've got a whole bunch of cattle that have somehow meandered into the junkyard, and the owner is going to have to request some assistance from the boys down at the Dutton Ranch. Uh, we see some Yellowstone branding on some of these cows, so here come the boys in the dually. <laughs> We're going to assess the situation here. A lot of cows. And uh, what are we going to do? Where's the? We didn't bring the livestock trailer. That would have been very helpful. Because there are far too many cattle here. To just herd them out of the junkyard. Oh, we've got some assistance now coming. We've got the Montana Livestock Association. Also coming in for some assistance. And we're going to squeeze by these uh, various types of cow and steer and I don't know what we're going to do. But we're going to try and come together with a game plan as to uh, round up all these wild beasts of burden and get them back to the ranch. And also we're going to uh, process a whole load of new vehicles entering the junkyard. Some new scrap iron for the lot. Okay, I think the boys have come up with a solution. We're going to get these pickup trucks out of the way because we've got some heavy equipment coming in to assist with the movement of these uh, animals. And here it comes. It's not quite what they were expecting. Watch the boulders. Oh my goodness. What a rough ride. It's Bob in the... Material handler coming to uh, potentially move the cattle in a very uh, humane and uh, careful way. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's got the claw. Got the claw on the cattle. There we go. Perfect. Okay, get the next piece of equipment in that we need to finish this process. And what is that? Oh my goodness, it's a 775. Whoa, watch the gravel. And there's no room to get by. May have to go around or possibly right over the vehicles. I'm not really sure what we're going to do here. Uh, the cattle is uh, nice and calm. We've got the cushioned claw. And it uh, doesn't seem to be in any sort of trouble other than it's uh, way up in the air. We can't get the dump truck around to put it in just yet. Okay, I think we figured it out. We've got the uh, trucks blocking the road so nobody can come in and possibly get hurt. The uh, 775 found a back road in. We're just going to get by all these cows. Get out of the way, cows. Oh, no. Jeez. Jeez, Louise. And there we go. First cow into the dump bin. And uh, we're just going to have to get out of the way of that other cow. Uh, I don't know if that one's going to make it. But anyways... Uh, we got other things to do as well. Sam's over here checking out the uh, junked cars. We've got a Chevy Impala, uh, playing with satellite, a Volkswagen 181, Gypsy Sonoma, Ford F-150, an Austin Mini, and a little Volkswagen MK1. So let's find a home for those cars because I think the Livestock Boys have got everything under control and it uh, doesn't look like they need any further assistance from Sam. Well, it turns out we've got more pressing issues. Uh, it appears that the cattle operation has been completed. And uh, we're just saying goodbye to the uh, the lads. They're going to head out now in their awesome looking trucks. And check out the, uh, the operation here. A full success. No cattle were harmed. It looked like it might uh, be a little bit uh, sketchy, the operation that is. But the 775, working great. And uh, just a whole lot of happy cattle in there, just getting ready to go back to their home at the Dutton Ranch. And uh, Sam can now use the claw for its intended purpose, which is to place scrap cars. But we've got a review to do. We've got a green light review today. Let's take a look at a whole bunch of new awesome cars, including the ones that you just saw. Entering the salvage yard. Welcome back to the Hot Wheels Museum. Today we are looking at green light stuff. I am clearing the floor hoard of all these green light cars. 
hopefully over the next few videos. However, I will be getting a Hot Wheels year-by-year -year video in next. And today we are looking at cars that uh, are some complete sets, such as the Hot Hatches Series 2, and a few favorites from other series that I didn't collect fully, such as Barrett Jackson, 50th Anniversary, Hobby Shop Series 12, V-Dub Club 15 and 16, a couple cars there. And my favorites from Greenlight are the Hollywood series. This is series 38, of which I have five out of the six vehicles. I think I'm missing the car from Lost. It's a Mustang, orange Mustang. I uh, wasn't trying to collect them in completion, but some really cool models in here. One being this old Ford weathered truck, which I've already previously reviewed in the trucks video. Just thought I'd bring it here since I'm looking at the rest of series 38 which includes the awesome Yellowstone Authentic Merchandise uh, vehicles from that TV show. They are incredible. I'm going to be opening up just about everything here except for that Dodge Charger because I do want to keep one in the package and I've only found one so far. Everything else you see getting opened up for a full review. And I've also got the Complete Series 39 from Hollywood, which includes a whole bunch of awesome four-door cop cars and taxis. My favorite being the Beverly Hills Cop. 81 Chevy Impala, and of course the taxi of the same car from Coming to America. And although I never watched Brady Bunch, check out this 69 Plymouth Satellite Station Wagon, all weathered up, dusted, looking amazing. Can't wait to review that, loose here on the parking lot. And yes, another Yellowstone vehicle finds its way into Mix 39. This is the 2020 Ram 2500. And just check out the details on this thing, I can't wait to get it over the package. It's got that big cattle bar on the front, and uh, we're going to get everything out here on the parking lot for a full loose review. Let's start the video off with Hollywood Series 38, then we're going to look at Series 39, Hot Hatches, and the leftover cars from V-Dub Club, uh, the 50th Anniversary, and Hobby Shop. It's just some extras for the collection, but there's the truck that we looked at in a previous video. It is really cool. Um, I did criticize slightly the weathering on the roof. I don't think that looks the greatest, given that Greenlight definitely has the capacity to make much more realistic-looking weathering than that. The uh, bed liner looks pretty good. I like the prime bumper and rust around the fender wells, but yeah, I just think they could have done a more realistic rust job for the uh, roof and hood patina on this otherwise impeccable truck. And now let's open up this wicked truck i've been waiting patiently to review this with you guys and it's taken everything i could not to open it as soon as i bought it at my local walmart now there's not a lot of details on the packaging so we're not even going to bother looking at that but if you guys have ever watched yellowstone you know it's a pretty good show uh i really enjoy it anyways and this is one of the trucks seen in the show so a big four-door Heavy duty dually Dodge Ram with uh, a plastic base, true duallys. It's got the hitch and tow compatible hitch, headache rack in the back, uh, the big mirrors, of course, the, the Dutton Ranch Yellowstone logo on the door. And it does look like it needs a bit of a shine up, but we're not going to worry about that in this video. They do shine up and it rolls pretty good. The one car in this entire review that you're not going to see loose because I want to collect the Yellowstone Authentic merchandise, even though nothing really on the packaging, they're all the same. Um, it just, I want to have a collection of these that I can hang on the wall, especially if the Greenlight continues to make Yellowstone vehicles, which I certainly hope that they do. There's a lot of interesting vehicles that the characters drive, uh, including weathered older vehicles uh, that would make a great collection, similar to what they've done with the uh, kind of, Dukes of Hazards sort of non Dukes of Hazards collection. Anyways, this is the 2011 Dodge Charger Pursuit, and uh, as we can see, it's got the County Sheriff, Deputy number 18 on the door, and that's that. So, on to the next. I think we're gonna go a little out of order here, just because we just looked at uh, a Yellowstone truck. We're gonna look at Series 39 Yellowstone 2020 Ram. Uh, 2500 so this is a newer ram the last one we saw was a 3500 did i say 2500 i hope not and here it is coming out of the package this one has a lighter gray paint job different logo on the door montana oh this is not from the yellowstone ranch i don't believe 
Livestock Association. So this is the Livestock Association's Dodge Ram truck. Also fit for uh, all the ranch territory that these vehicles find themselves in. This one is not a dually, but it does have the same push bar on the front. And those trailer tow mirrors. So just a side-by-side -side of these two very cool trucks. No hitch on this one. Uh, both 4x4. Four four. What a great little collection already. Um, let's go back into Series 38. And then we're going to continue into Series 39. Series 38 included the 86 Ford Taurus. One of my favorite castings of this past year from Greenlight. So happy to see this, and I can't wait to see a station wagon of the Ford Taurus. Tommy Boy, the movie. This one actually has some details on the back. In case you haven't watched this uh, comedy, you can pause on that and decide. Just go watch it. Ford Taurus. I don't actually remember where this car was in the movie because it's been such a long time since I watched it, but clearly it is a crash test livery car. And I really like the metallic blue paint job on it. Looks pretty cool. A few fingerprints, but I'm sure it's going to shine up just fine. Then we've got Reno 911. I assume this is a television show, which I am not familiar with. But I do like the car. It's a 98 Ford Crown Victoria Interceptor. Pretty basic livery on this one. Uh, I assume it's a comedy based on the uh, attire of the characters here. Perhaps it's a movie. I'm not sure. Regardless, we're here to see the cars, not do movie reviews. And uh, this is a nice one. Nice heavy casting. Great light bar on it. Push bar on the front, all metal. And what does it say on the license plate? Just a numbered license plate. Pretty cool car. So, uh, we got one more from Series 38. American Pickers from the History Channel Network. Uh, show I absolutely loved watching. Uh, many years of American Pickers and so many good episodes with uh, with the lads uh, Mike Wolf and Frank. Uh, I forget his last name now. But anyways, I don't know where this was in that show. VW Thing, 1974, Type 181, all dusted up. Now this is the kind of weathering I'm talking about. How, uh, how the weathering kind of just doesn't quite look right on the Ford, the patina, you know, they've got uh, the ability to make very realistic weathering on that fender, as you can see. Uh, it's a small spot, but anyways, really cool little truck, definitely going to find its home in the junkyard alongside the Ford, which I actually just plucked from the junkyard for this video. Now we're going on into Series 39, another Ford Crown Victoria Interceptor, very popular casting, people like to collect this car. This is a 2006 from NCIS New Orleans. Uh, I don't know what that stands for. It'll come to me later. Maybe it says right here. Uh, anyways, there's a uh, little blurb about the show. And let's take a look at the car. This one has a transparent light bar. As you can see, Series 39 car, no fingerprints or grease on the windows. Something I've noticed in the newer green lights, um, they're very clean. So there's something has changed, perhaps. Maybe it's just uh, luck of the draw, but I've noticed a lot of the newer cars that I've opened up are very clean. And uh, although these ones clean up just fine, these ones are cl coming clean out of the package. And check out the wheels on this thing. It rolls amazing. So we've got two different model years of Crown Victoria here, as you can see. I think these are different cars, or am I wrong? No, they're the same car. Pretty much the same. Okay, now we're getting into an older police car. This is from Beverly Hills Cop. This is actually one of three of the Beverly Hills movies. All terrific, featuring uh, Eddie Murphy as the star of that uh, 1980s, I think it's late 80s, early 90s movie. Uh, comedy movie. 1981 Chevy Impala. Nothing on the back. Now, I just love getting me these big old Chevy Impalas. They look great. And here, again, very clean car coming straight out of the package. The push bar on this car looks a little funny, and I'm probably going to go ahead and remove that because it just it doesn't look like it's in the right spot, although it is glued into the pins assigned for it. It just sticks way out there. Um, nice, simple livery on this car. Very good details for the taillights and headlights. 
a nice light bar. Uh, this got a fingerprint on it, but it's going to wipe right off. Nice shiny car. This one's got a little bit of a axle. I think the tires just, yeah, the tires just come off the rim. So we'll just push that back onto the rim and hopefully, well, maybe it needs a bit more adjustment than that. I'm not sure. Luckily, we've got two more. So although this uh, is unnecessary to review the car three times, I thought it'd be kind of fun to get all the police cars out in the same video. We can just do a little comparison of them all. See how clean they all are. Very clean, again. Um, minimal wipage needed. Polishing, I should say. And this one's probably going to roll because most of these green lights have been rolling really nice. Yeah. And again, in case you didn't see it the first two times, here's another one. Also rolls pretty decent. So three awesome cars there. And now on to three of these Chevy Impalas from Coming to America. Snazzy artwork on this card back. And this one actually does have a bit of a story about the movie, 1988. Let's take a look at the taxi. It's not too often you get taxis. There's much more frequently police cars, especially with the Hot Pursuit series. But this is just one of my favorite years of uh, Chevy Impala. I really like the headlights on it. It's got the four independent uh, halogen bulbs. Another very clean car. Front wheel's not turning. These uh, these Impalas sometimes have some issues with the spacing of the wheels. They're a little bit wide, and they probably should be tucked into the fender wells a little better. But as a, a display model, it looks it looks right. It's just that with the back and forth movement, they can get caught on these fender wells. And uh, check out the taxi uh, top there. Very detailed. Nice chrome all the way around. Now that one rolls just fine. One more. Oh, and we got a bumper that's off. No big deal. You can see where the pins are. So, a little dab of hobby glue. This car will just end up in the junkyard for me. I need one old tax in the junkyard, but yeah, no, it's sheared right off. You can see the pins are still in the holes. So, the bumper's not going to clip back on as they often do. Lost focus entirely here. Uh, otherwise nice clean model and i knew actually i knew the bumper was broken off when i found the car at walmart and i just it's not a big deal a couple dabs of glue and you just lean the car up like that while well, it sets overnight and you're all set so i wanted uh, at least three of each of these cars for my collection and i did end up picking up two brady brunch cars from the same series number 39 there will be no more duplicates after this, so if you're getting bored of seeing the same car two and three times, I assure you it's over after this one. And uh, very nice casting. Looks terrific. We've lost the focus because there's nothing behind it. I think that's the problem. Nope, that's not the problem. Uh, it has a hitch. This one has a drop-down tailgate. License plate is detailed. I like how the windows are all dusted. White wall tires look pretty good. They're uh, pretty good circles on them. Well, these back ones are a little bit... That one leaves a little bit to be desired, but... Nice rolling car. Let's see if we can make one really good one out of the white walls provided on these two cars and then turn the other one into a black wall. And by doing that, all I have to do is peel the tire off and uh, just switch it around so the black wall is facing out. This one looks like it's got decent... This one actually has four decent white wall tires, so maybe don't need to do that. Just a great little model. I really like this casting a lot, and this is probably my favorite one now. They've produced it in gold before. I'm not sure if it was a Brady Bunch car specifically, but uh, it may very well have been. Anyways, it's nice to see it all dusted up. So we've got three vehicles for sure entering the junkyard. That would be those uh, three at the back, and well, at least one taxi with a broken bumper. Okay, where are we going next? Uh, it is going to be Hot Hatches Series 2. Some very cool cars in this series. 79 Ford Mustang Cobra. Always a popular model. You got the whole list of them on the back, but you're going to see all of them anyways right here. I'm not sure when this series came out, but it's not too old. Nice little Cobra Mustang. And I think this one had, yeah, it has an opening hood. Um, the Crown Victorias also had opening hoods, but they're pretty difficult to open up on camera without 
picking and poking and well we just want to keep the video moving along here so let's move all these cars back a smidge so we can get the hot hatches out in front and there we go cop car cop car okay great lots of room now so we got the mustang another one of my favorite castings is this little 83 volkswagen golf mk1 gt1 i pretty much pick these things up whenever i can in any series there's also one in b-dub club this one's a 79 we might as well open that one up at the same time even though we're in the hot hatches uh series i like to do a little comparison when i got two of the same models uh with different paint jobs especially nice little wheels on this car very clean and uh, this one also has an opening hood, which is great. It's a nice little casting. Great little details in there. Grill, GTI badge on the grill. All the chrome, door handles. No license plate on this car, so dealer special perhaps. And let's take a look at the V-Dub Club, uh, just because I got Rams. This is the only one I had from Series 16. I've stopped collecting most of the Volkswagen products because I have so many of them. Uh, 16 series of V-Dub Club means there's like, ooh, probably about 80 Volkswagen cars in that series alone, let alone other series such as hot hatches and, you know, running on empty. Hood doesn't want to open all the way here. Hundreds of these little Volkswagens is my point, and I've got a lot of them already in my collection, so I only buy the ones that have a real paint job at this point. I'm not buying race car versions unless they are from the hot hatch series. And I think I got that case at the old um, Aurelia Diecast hobby shop. So that was probably why I have all six here. They give a deal if you buy all six as a case instead of buying them independently. And I think they've showed up at the local Walmarts, but I don't typically buy them all when I do see them there, even though it probably would be cheaper. Given that Walmart is a superstore pricing sort of place. But uh, they don't always have the whole collection, of course. They don't really get a lot of green light in. What are we looking at here? I didn't read it, but that's another little Volkswagen Golf GTI. Uh, older model by the looks of it. And it's got the uh, the cast fender flares. This is the racing version, rally racing. Very nice. I love the little tires. Did we look at the tires closely enough? Eagle, Goodyear Eagle with those gold rally rims. Um, we're going to switch it up now and look at a 1964 Morris Mini Cooper S. These are fun little castings. I've got quite a few of them. This is probably one of the smallest, if not the smallest, casting that Greenlight produces. Tiny little wheels. Luckily, it is all metal, of course. Otherwise, it would weigh absolutely nothing. And what does it say on the back? I don't know. It's not focusing. There we go. Rally Monte Carlo. It's got a European license plate by the looks of it. Very nice, simple racing rally deco on it. And just let's take a look for reference scale. The wide variety of die casts you can get in green light and the beauty of true 164 scale. Now that is pretty neat. How small that little car is next to this big truck. No, oh, that would be bad. Bad news for anyone in that situation. Luckily, these are just toys. Uh, 94 Ford Escort RS Cosworth. Cool little casting. This one I do collect. Pretty much whenever I see it, I still don't have quite enough of them. Maybe only about eight or ten of them. you got to be careful getting into the package, though. It's got a delicate spoiler on the back. Made of plastic and glued to the uh, casting, as you can see. You don't want to break that off by pulling it out of the package too quickly. Michelin livery on it. Pilot. Very cool. A lot of different livery, actually. We've got Mobile One advertisement. Uh, Pilot Team Ford. There's the Michelin Man right up on the roof. And this one, I believe, has an opening hood as well. It does. Very detailed engine. Check it out. This is probably one of the most detailed engines. They've even painted on the uh, lettering for the double overhead cam uh, multi-port valve system. Very cool. So some really nice details in green light. And with the cleanliness of the cars now and the great rolling... It's a, a top brand, in my opinion. It really is. Uh, 2019 Nissan 370Z. I say Z because I'm Canadian. You can call it Z if you like. Heritage Edition. 
Oh, I like the Zed cars. <laughs> I, just, I like saying Zed, too. Uh, anyways, what have we got here on the side? 370. Really cool wheels. Uh, no opening parts on this one, but another very clean casting. Really cool car. Okay, we've only got three cars left, and uh, that's pretty much it. So we've got one more V-Dub Club car. This one's from Series 15. I bought this one because I hadn't purchased any of these uh, Type 181 things yet. This one I purchased after from uh, the uh, Hollywood Series 38. But this one here was one of the, I think, the first thing that I found. And I was like, well, i got to get that casting in my collection. And I forgot to mention that these do have an opening little um, engine bay door on the back. Very cleverly done. It's amazing that Greenlight puts all these awesome little details in. It is a metal base, although it is painted black. It has a hitch, so you could tow a small trailer with it. And some of these are convertibles. These ones have the roofs on them, of course. But nice little models that roll really well. Um, we've got a one car from the 50th anniversary Barrett Jackson. That is the 69 Ford Mustang Custom Fastback. The white interior. Really snazzy. And, and these are cool because it actually shows the real car at the auction on the uh, card back. Series 11, in case you're wondering. Sold, no reserve, for $104,000 and change in Scottsdale 2022. Little blurb on that car if you want to pause on it. And there it is. Very shiny. Has an opening hood. Sweet wheels. All metal. There you go. That is a nice, nice Mustang. Oh, and it's just butter smooth in the rolling department. The last one we're looking at is Hobby Shop Series 12 as well. Another Series 12 car. This is the 91 GMC Sonoma ST with the vintage Pennzoil gas pump. Very cool. I love the accessories. Sometimes you get wheels and tires. Sometimes you get gas pump. Other times you get a little uh, person, a little figurine. And there are the other vehicles in this collection, of which some of these I know I've already reviewed, like the 80 Chevy El Camino Super Sport with spare tires. That was the blue one. I actually have it right here in reach. That was from Series 12 as well, and there's the spare tires in it. That one's just resting in the junkyard right now. I did get a couple of those cars because that is definitely one of my favorite castings as well. Another super cool casting. So we're not doing like a full review of the series clearly here. We're just kind of cleaning up the mess on the floor. Some of these I bought after the fact. Uh, you know, Walmart doesn't always have rhyme or reason as to when they get series. I've noticed sometimes they have stale series like older stuff. And then I will find things I didn't buy initially. I always think the hood's going to open on this one and I don't think it does. It's a separately cast piece. And uh, they've done a similar paint job for this truck, white with red stripe, but it's not the same. It's out of reach for me right now for my present seated position, but they've made a lot of these uh, GMC Sonomas. And uh, I collect them all at this point, especially when they got cool paint jobs, like nice realistic ones, I should say. Pennzoil Vintage Gas Pump. Got a huge collection of those in the junkyard. We're going to look at the junkyard quick, actually, and uh, finish this video off. It's always fun to go to the junkyard. And see where some of these cars are going to go and where my gas pump is going to go. You can see all the rest of those. Back at Sam Salvage Yard, the material handler has just placed its final car. The little Volkswagen has found its home in front of a pile of older trucks. Chevy Impala seems to be in the dump bin of this old Chevy truck. And there is an Austin Mini kind of hiding in there as well. Uh, in addition to that, some cars found their way over here. The dusted up cars are uh, parked alongside this horde of vehicles. And where else did we put vehicles? Let's see now. The GMC Sonoma over here in this little yard of trucks and other assorted vehicles. And I think that does it. I think that about covers this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you're after any of these vehicles or castings, of course, happy hunting. Be sure to leave me a like if you like this video, and I'm happy to read your comments. See you in the next.